I would just advise somebody to own just an acre of habaneros. Even, even if you should sell a kilo at five cities, you okay. are going to make 5k a week. You understand? If you get a ton, it's 5k a week. So if you get a ton of habaneros on your kilo and on your, on your one acre and you decide to sell um, a kilo for five cities, that's 5k a week. That's, that's more than somebody who works a nine to five. Uh, that's yeah, twenty k a keep... month. Come on, that is not taxed. <laughs> that is not taxed. <laughs> not taxed. So welcome back to another exciting family week in Ghana. This is the first time. I'm Charles on Edition. We talk about farming here in Africa. So from the previous video, we had a conversation with Lenny. Today, I'm going to have a look at, I have a tour of the farm. Since it does like um, other things aside of the habaneros that he has, I have a look at how big the farm is, what he does on the farm. I have a conversation around that. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do in this video. Kindly like, subscribe, and share this video to other people to get to learn more about um, some of these things that people are doing here in Ghana. So yeah, Lenny, this is a farm. Yes. We want to know what you do here. You can take us around. Um, let us know if there's anything important that you want to share with us here on the farm. Just let us know. Yes. So this is our, this, this is our irrigation point. We actually get water from a borehole from the top there. But then we, we pump the water into the polytank. And actually, forgive our polytank stand. This is not actually the size it should be. It should be at least 10 feet high. But for us, we are going to put on a solar pump for it to be able to push the water. So okay. we don't have problems at height. But ideally, we prefer a 10 feet high polytank stand so that the gravity can actually act on them and then to get to everywhere on the farm. On the farm. So these are 5,200 liters polytanks. So if I mean, like this polytanks power, like supply water to the entire farm? No, not or the, just, just this place. Or just, just this place. Okay, okay, sure. You actually need about 10,000 liters of water a day for an acre of Wow. Because for me, I grow 10,000 seedlings or sticks of pepper on, on each acre. So every pepper stick gets a liter of water a day. Interesting. Yeah. But then, like I said, we are in Africa. Of course, we don't have the the finances to finance farms outright. Mm. So you could use five thousand liter polytank to shuttle it okay. twice. You can just valve it, close points, and then you continue. So okay. this is a filter. Obviously, every irrigation has, to be has a filter to take away the debris so that you don't get the drip lines clogged. So this are filter, this um these are PVC pipes obviously linked into the polytank. You would have here these are HBP pipes. These are called HBP, HBP pipes. pipes. But we have P pipes we use. Those are a bit more um lighter. Um they are not very thick. Mm. Those are the ideal ones for agriculture. These ones are for construction and water plumbing and all of those. Well, okay. When you are punching them, they are quite difficult, to, difficult punch. to punch. So these are drip lines. This is a drip line. That supplies the water to the... So the water drips in, in drops. Okay. And then these are valves. So we have various valves. We have ones that have the tap and then we have ones that don't have the taps. So I prefer the ones with the tap because I have gardens and in my gardens i grow various vegetables obviously i would have to shuttle them oh i close this line so that because the fertilizer may possibly be given is for tomatoes not for the peppers okay, okay. so this these ones are more advisable to be used to, to use so you could see black polytons on the on the 
surface of the ground on which the peppers are planted. Yeah. They are called plastic mulch. mulch. It is, I think on Twitter you're explaining it to someone when you posted a picture. The exactly. Last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it prevents the growth of grass and it also holds moisture. That's why we use them, especially for the hamatan. You are advised to use plastic mulch. Um, Alex explained the use of plastic mulch to me, g um, giving a particular location in which you are. He said in some of the European countries they use the, the the yellow ones. The yellow ones have a more they, they attract uh, insects and then so you don't suffer insect infestation and all of those okay. on your farm. We are all in. So there are different different ones depending yeah, different on where colors. you are. We have different colors. We have black we have ash we have white we have yellow we have different colors okay 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 sure so there's like um said almost two acres of having a yeah, yeah, yeah. if if we got if we had gotten to the end it would have been one hectare two and a half acres but okay. we are just starting Yet, so like you asked me, I told you we are like 30% or 20% into that, our farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have not gotten anywhere yet. We okay. still have seedlings in the nursery. We are, we are nursing to go. Okay, okay, okay. So from here, where do we go to? We will go to the nursery house. But before then, we could meet my cousins and my friends. Okay, okay, sure. Say hello to them. That's fine. <laughs> Good. Is it morning? Good morning, oh, Good morning. morning. You're welcome. Thank you, boss. I'm Charles. What's your name? I'm Ken. Ken. Yeah. Nice, nice. Cheers. Yeah. I don't know your name. Adeo. Your name? Selassie. Selassie. So, okay. Selassie is the original farm owner. <laughs> this is the deputy original farm owner. Original farm owner. You are what? Oh, me. I'm Second deputy. I'm learning from them. Chief labourer. Chief labourer. <laughs> Sure, 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 sure. So they come here basically every day. Even on Christmas day, they will be here. To come and check it out. And they come here every day. Me, I come here expiringly. Mm. I give the excuse that I'm not fine. <laughs> and they will come and mm. do the work for you. Nice, nice, nice. So this will be Charles. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I visit farms. I visit farmers to share their experience, what they do, okay. and stuff here. Yeah. Having viewers of um, people who are interested in agriculture, basically, wanting to start, and they're already into it, wanting to learn. So yeah, that's what I do. Oh, okay. And today we came to learn this farm. You invited us here. Yes. That's fine. And we saw you around fixing some of the irrigation work, and we yeah. decided, oh, let's come and just have a conversation with you. Oh, okay. Sure. So um, what do you come like? Normally, what do you, what do, you do here on the farm? But as I said, should answer this question. Okay. <laughs> he, he does a day to day work, yeah? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. In most... Okay, in the morning, like this, we have to give them water. Okay. That's what we do first. And then we move on to check on the plants, whether there is some disease or any casualties. That's okay. check on them. And then the morning, too, as well, as the wind goes, sometimes covers them. You go one by one, check because there are a lot of yeah, yeah. So you, you go through row by row. Oh, okay. Or maybe you jump at the <laughs> random. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So when you spot something unusual, then you move towards it and then pay attention to it. Yes. Nice, 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 nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That is why you have to be here always. To be checking on it. You are, there is always job here, so you have to be here every <laughs> blessed day. <laughs> That's nice, that's nice. So I was saying it is like almost like two acres. Hector. One hectare. One hectare. Okay. That's nice. I like I like how the peppers have grown nicely. Mm. And they are looking. You can see a lot of work we actually went into it. Yes. A lot of work actually went into it. That's nice. That's nice. So even let me know your your thoughts about um agriculture in general. How do you see agriculture here in Ghana? Let me let me start with you. I just want to know your perspective, like your idea about agriculture. What do you think? As a country, mm. we fall short in. Is there something we're supposed to invest more into? It? Is there something people are supposed to go into? It? Or it's not oh, worth yeah. it? It's not worth the time at all. Yeah. Uh, let me say, we need to invest more. But here, here are the case. You know, let me say the youth. They are ever ready to 
going to agree that the support is not there. Mm. Uh-huh. You see, we need more machines and then the chemicals uh-huh, to help, but the support is not there. So you see someone starting it because the support is not there. You just stop, stop because no motivation, line. nothing uh, to push, keep pushing him. So you just stop. Okay. So if this support should come, uh, I think agriculture Ghana, I think will be among those okay. countries. So we will. believe agriculture is the future. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, sure. Okay, mm. thank you. So we need support from the government. The government should come in. Come support. and do more. Yes. yes. Sure, sure. Because they said they are doing more, but it's oh, like you see it. <laughs> <laughs> you, say you will see you it. Say it, but when it comes to the reality, you won't see yeah, it. Yeah, it's all paper, 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 paper based. Paper. Sure, sure. Mr. <laughs> Salas, so, what, what's your thoughts on agriculture? My, yes. My thoughts. Yeah. Uh, agriculture is the future. Okay. It's the future in the sense that uh, currently the increase of food products in market. If we should plant more. All these prices will come down drastically. But due to the nature of our farming, using weather in planting, definitely you have to face the challenge in which we are now. So I believe if government can support in bringing down this mechanized product for us to farm with it, and then at least finance support to make it. Well, the government, they, a lot of work has to be done. Yeah. Uh, we agree with that. They have to do more. They are doing some, but they have to do more. <laughs> they have to do more. They have to do more. Okay, okay. So, yeah, we are touring the farm with Slendy. So, okay. we're going around. All right, thank you for your time. All right. So in addition year, to this one, or like just this? No, just this place. Just, just this place. Oh, okay, okay, okay. From here down there. Where you live down there, this one? Yeah, where the ridges, the okay. ridges have been made. Sure. I would have wanted to go sweet corns, but there are cattle here. Yeah. You would, you would be inviting them in. Mm. But then I would surely grow watermelons and melons, which are not for sale. They are supposed to be eaten by anyone who works there. That's that's some of the things we should be doing as farmers, especially when we have labor on our farms. Okay. I initially I largely depended on the prisoners in here in Akusi. We have prisoners. Yeah, prison, have prisoners in Akusi. Yeah. But I never knew. Yeah, there's there's prisoners in Akusi. Okay. The inmates are very hardworking. Like they are very helpful. Why do they bring the, some of them to the around to come and help with the yeah, farm? Yeah, you can go and book them for a day they give you four of them they come to your farm to do whatever work you want them to do for oh, you okay you're not supposed to pay them but you should be kind towards them no. and they're actually hard working so for people like that coming to your farm you should have something they should be able to take away and they are going watermelons would would do help. them would help yeah they can keep it for a day or two before they actually break it open to eat so i'm looking at growing melons Melons just because maybe I would want to try the market. My auntie uses a lot of watermelon for her medicine, so I would like to grow watermelons for her as well. Okay. So this place would would grow peppers, but not now. Initially, we would grow at least an acre of habaneros. No, we'd grow an acre of okros here. Um, maybe half an acre of um melons and watermelons together. Then. The latter part of the farm is a garden. Yeah, no. On the same stretch, the latter part of it would be a garden where I grow at least a thousand sticks of tomatoes, a thousand heads of cabbages, a thousand aubergines, thousand garden eggs, and thousand five hundred yellow um, capsicums okay. and five hundred red capsicums. But it's supposed to be consumed at home, not for sale. That's right. Okay. So okay. everything here, the only thing that may be sold on this stretch would be okra, not the watermelons. Watermelons. So, no, the rest are not for sale. But for the okras, they will. Be Why for not sale. for sale? Uh, so you can make money from those. Things. I have a huge family, and I. <laughs> That's very sure everyone is sorted. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, my, I am, I'm a very lucky person. I would always say I have. The support of my friends, 
my my family people, my cousins. They you I could be on the farm and then they some one one of the days I was on the farm and three cars. My cousins. Came by. Okay. They came by fully dressed to come and work on the farm. Oh nice. And we pruned the whole farm in like a day. Nice. It was very, it was pleasing, it was encouraging. Yeah, that you have the support system from there. Exactly. Them. There was one Sunday, my dad and I went to the farm to harvest it. Okay, I used I used to sell, I, I was the one who used to supply milk from habaneros. Okay. Through a band jungle. And there was this time they needed peppers urgently. So we had to go to the farm on a Sunday. And that was a fight. My mom never jokes with her Sundays. And with my dad going with me to the farm on a Sunday. She wasn't having it, but we went to the farm. Could you believe this woman came to the farm fully dressed in a church? <laughs> yeah, with my brother. They came to the farm to see. That was the first time she came to my paper farm. Okay. Since then, she's not been hard on me about go to church or are you going to the farm because she's seen progress. Okay. I'm actually seen as the laziest person in my house. <laughs> hey. yeah. that, that is the, the, the hard work is on top. Oh, the... Be f- proud to me becoming a farmer. Even when I said I would become a farmer, nobody actually believed. Believed you. Nobody. Everyone was like, "Get out of here!" <laughs> but they've all have. They've all have become okay with me being a farmer. Nobody stresses with me. Go and look for a job. Yeah. yeah. Oh, once you are, come on. Let's just say a job. I mean. Exactly. Once you are making money from it. I go to Google the job. I make so much money. The job, the job, the main purpose of working or having a nine to five is to get money. Or yes, what sure. money. Uh-huh. So once I also been agriculture, I'm making lots of money from it. Even make more than someone who say he's he does nine to five on a day. That you yeah. pay that every month. Oh, come on. I would just advise somebody to own just an acre of habaneros. Even if you should sell a kilo at five cities. You are going to make 5k a week. You understand? If you get a ton, it's 5k a week. So if you get a ton of habaneros on your kilo and on your one acre and you decide to sell um, a kilo for 5 cities, that's 5k a week. That's That's more than somebody who works a 9 to 5. That's 20k a month. That is not taxed. (laughs) That is not taxed. The whole acre actually ends here. It's somewhere here, but we move it. So one here, up to the to the end over there. Okay. So this is where I was, I'll grow. The whole place is for okros. Then this part will be for. Then the, this place will be for the melons, water. and then the garden goes. Okay. The garden is very important for me. When you why? See, yeah. Like Selassie said, food is expensive in the market. So there was a time I didn't come to the farm. I had my nephews and my niece come for vacation okay. and my friends some of my friends came to the house and i decided to go to the market to buy vegetables like cabbages and all of this i like cabbages a lot so i was i went to the market to buy cabbages and all all what i could have gotten from the farm i could i didn't pick them because i didn't know they would come mm-hmm. so i went to the market to buy them when i bought them i was like really <laughs> how, how are you guys surviving it's not easy so for me, gardens are way more, more important to me than whatever I would get from here. Because if I have a garden, of course... You'll be buying from outside. I won't save buy. A lot. I'll save a lot. I can also buy a Lamborghini if I... <laughs> like Kwame <laughs> Des buys. <laughs> I always say, like me personally, I, I was this year, things, the economy has been shaky. Yeah, Price of goods and services are up. The city depreciated like crazily. So I always have to advise people, it's about time we do our own gardens. Even put the economy aside. Most farmers that we visit or most farmers that the food we consume. Now, as far as it used to last more or longer, mm-hmm. when you take them, when you buy them from the markets. But now we do, when you buy them a day or two and they, they go bad. You see, one of the one of the problems about that is we we as farmers complain about price of fertilizers, we are using a lot of fertilizers simply because you are using fertilizers wrongly. Okay. That's why, again, I advise you to engage an agronomist. Mm-hmm. Kofi will tell you he's capable of growing an entire one hectare of farm with just six kilos of map, mono and mono phosphate. Okay. He doesn't need enough fertilizers. He will go and collect, Kofi collects cow dung, mix it with um, 
um, neem cake and then he applies it at wherever he puts pepper he doesn't need fertilizers and they will grow nicely they will grow nicely I, I feel most of the things you consume most of the products the vegetables and stuff on the, on the market are like fertilizer induced like chemically induced so once you bring them you don't, you don't really spend much time then I think it's a, every, even the foods the whites eat they use fertilizers the only thing is that they use it in the right amount you would have somebody use maybe 30 kilos of map for an acre of farm a whole year and the question is like how you are over fertilizing the, the thing so it gets to a point that the land becomes salty and won't even be viable for it to grow any other thing so it is the misuse of fertilizers that are leading us to have food getting spoiled quickly like i said the tomatoes we grew we we barely even added fertilizers to it when you came did you see any fertilizer rubber on the floor nah. we barely even add fertilizers we of course we use fertilizers i'm not disputing the fact you can see um cow down here we use them occasionally mix it with neem cake just so that we can fight the fungi you know. so but yeah fertilizer are okay see i'm talking about this cow dunk and stuff they are organic yeah, yeah. most people use the inorganic ones you get it. Fertilizer application is good. We still use it inorganic helps. fertilizers. Again, but like yeah, I there said, is more. Very minute amounts. They don't know how to use it. So if they should get an agronomist to do the calculations the for them. For instance, the amount of um, fertilizer we use is dependent on the poly tanks we have. Oh. We do those calculations. calculations Kofi does those calculations. Alex does. I don't have time for this. <laughs> but I know them. You should you should take an interest in knowing those calculations so that when they are not even around, you could do it for yourselves. Yeah. When you do it, you just very little, just put it inside the poly tank and I'm good to go. You are good to go. Hmm. So we are here in my nursery. Okay, okay. We built the nursery with um, insect nets, very expensive insect nets. Wow. With solar rigs, so solar rigs. Uh, they they hold a certain amount of sunlight from getting into the into it. Yeah, how much did it cost to put it up the structure? Uh, if you give an estimate, it could be like. Ten <laughs> I like the way they are talking about money. <laughs> Just look at, you have this look on your face. <laughs> it would be like thank like you. Uh, okay, it could be cheaper. But depending on maybe what you use, depending on the, where you are too. But the price of the solar rig and the insert nets won't be different. Though. It may even be higher now. Higher than. Yeah. So that was built like a year ago. No, like months ago. Oh, okay. Like Just this year. Four, five months ago. Okay. Well, as the system economy was bad, the price of things would increase by now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's let's have a look. It's quite messy, but sorry. Oh. So we are having new papers here. Some of the papers here are not very viable. They, I think they've they've been too long. They've, In here. They, yeah, no, they've kept them too long before we seeded them. Oh, okay. So you, but these ones are ones. These are all seeds from Holland Green Tech Ghana. These are Mawenzilis. Mawenzilis. Yes, they are red. They are red habaneros. Extremely hot. They are hotter than the yellow habaneros. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we have Mawenzilis here. We have, and if you, if you pay close attention, you would realize we have dates of seeding, and the colors they are. So okay. we have dates of seeding: twenty first of December, twenty twenty two. That's when we seeded them. Today is what? Today is twenty seventh. Twenty seventh or twenty eighth. Twenty eighth. Yeah. So these are just a week old. Okay. Okay. And th these are these are not they are not even a week old. Like we seeded them a week ago, and it takes them three to four days to sprout out. So these are like three days or four days old peppers. Wow, mm. interesting. So from after this video, we'll have a look at habaneros itself, how mm. to grow them and stuff. So we'll go spend more details into how we go about habaneros. So if you're interested in that, stick and stay on the channel. And the next subsequent video, we'll have a look at that. Okay, so yes, you are your nest all your your seedlings. All like my your... seedlings. Every single one of them. You nest all of them. Yeah.
Nice, 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 nice. This is how I even on the ground. Yeah. Charlie. Yeah. Imagine planting all of these. So this one's we planted here. There's a new place you've Yes, yes. So that place is purpose, right? Yes, purpose. The entire place was supposed to be purpose, but and you see the purpose here again I'm I'm experiencing. Um you if you look at my previous nurseries. Okay. My previous nurseries in the Volta region. They look more appealing than these ones. Than these ones. Is that a reason? The weather. Here is hot. Yes. <laughs> you keep saying that here is very hot. Extremely hot. I'm like again, I'm ex like I'm I'm experiencing this place. This place is very hard. The mm. land here is very hard. I don't think just any type of Crop tractor work. can work here. Okay, thank you. It will take a very big tractor to to be able to to work these lands. It's very very hard. Even if you pour water here and you begin to dig, your hands still your inside of your palm will still hurt. Mm. It's that hard, and the place is hot. I think because it's that crash, most of the trees are cut cut down for I don't know real but estate and stuff. I like the Volta region. There are more exactly. trees. Exactly. There are more. Dead. So I, if you see. Two weeks old peppers in my nursery house in the Volta region, very with a lot of leaves. These ones, these ones are like three weeks old. And if I tell you they're three weeks old, you won't believe them. Mm. They don't look like three, three weeks, weeks old. Yeah, they are smaller. Yeah, exactly. They are smaller. Okay. It's because of the the weather. It's hot, and once you leave them without washing them, you find out that at the edges keep dying. The, Ceilings the because of the, the heat. It's just a day. They just didn't get water for a day. In mm. the Volta region, I could leave them for a day without water. Fine. They would they would look like they would look saggy, but once they get water, you begin to see that they are opening up. Oh. That's nice. That's nice. So having this nursery, preventing at least sunshine comes in all right, but it's not a certain amount. So inside of the uh, solar we we have this is called a shade net. Okay. I think when you when you go along the Somania path, you'd have you'd see a lot of shade nets in various colors. Mm. The colors are also important. We are using white because we just want to reduce the sunlight. That's all. Not that's you know, how much are black. We we have black ones are basically sometimes they are used for mangoes and fruits. Oh, okay. Largely, we could have used green nets for this place. That would also reduce some amount of sunlight. Mm. But we opted for insect nests instead. Okay. Okay. Just to control the insects. Yeah, exactly. That's nice. That's nice. Initially, what, the reason why I used insect nets was because I thought to use it as a, a mini greenhouse after nursery. After nursery, rather. Yeah. Not for the nursery purposes. I, I would nest, but after I finished nesting, I would have used it for a mini greenhouse to grow capsicums, maybe four beds of capsicums. Okay. But then, at the time I was, I had a surgery in June, appendicitis. Oh. So I wasn't really fit. When you want to come to the farm, oh, you are not fine. Don't you have come. To don't stuff. come. If I was here, the nursery would have been a bit taller. Now, if I do, if I grow anything in it, it won't be fine. Mm. The height is bad. Okay. okay. So what just this is like a new place to build more purpose. Yes. Um this is supposed to be three acres. It's, it's bigger than three acres. Actually. It's bigger than three acres. The this place is divided into four. Okay. And it, will, it, it could take about four acres of purpose. This place. Yeah, so this place we are looking at growing forty thousand. 40,000 sticks of peppers over here. Interesting. Yeah. I like the way you've done with the space. Okay, you said this one, the spaces are quite smaller. Smaller, and the beds are quite one. bigger. So we're actually utilizing the entire space, unlike the other place. Oh, okay. So, you know the drip lines already. Yeah. So this, the thing about farming is that as you go, you, you, you get to learn and experience and change stuff you would realize that while we, we came there are places that we had reached they are not very nice 
like this. And soft as this is. Now, I could say, like I said, it's a very, very hard, hard land. Yeah. So you would have to treat it like a baby for you to get it as you want it. The our problem initially was again I have I had not grown peppers around here before. I had not grown anything around here before. So I made basic mistakes. mistakes. Okay. Like preparation of the land. I had I made basic mistakes. I just plowed and caught the tractor to come and reach the place. So he reached it. I wasn't very comfortable with it. So I had to call the tractor guy back to come and harrow it. Do the, the due process. Okay. Plow, harrow, rotate it, and make beds. And even so the tractor that, ma- makes the beds. Yeah, the tractor makes the beds. No, okay. The tractor har- rotates and makes beds. So you have them in, in large, and then he has a rotate that breaks, breaks them to small to pieces. Okay. If here was a sandy place, there would have been a much better looking place than. But the peppers grow in a sandy area. Oh yes, tomatoes, peppers, onions they grow in sandy. Nice. There's there's a very there's a very nice place you would like to even visit at Madina, Miss Nose's place. Okay. Miss Nose works for MTN. She is a big part. She's a very enthusiastic person about Aziz. Oh and nice. She, she won one of the best summer awards for this year's uh Farmers Day. Farmers Day at Madina. Oh okay. That's Miss Nose. She grows pep- uh, tomatoes. She grows habaneros, tomatoes, chilies. But it's not a very big place, but it's a very Nice, 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 nice. Maybe uh, we'll try and get the connection and pay a visit to her. And that will be fine. Miss Nose is, Miss Nose will be happy to have you. Nice, nice, she nice. Comes here time in, time out. She gave me the PowerPoint. Ah, okay, yeah. okay. But I like the way this place is so. Yeah, it looks better than that. Yeah, 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 it looks more. So the next time you come here would be better than. Three acres, right? Yeah, this, this is about three acres. This is it's more than three acres, but not not up to three and a half acres. Okay, okay. Because looking at the finances that goes into getting the drip and the irrigation system, how much? How much did it cost having these? The entire place. Not the entire place, per se. Wait for the land, yeah. yeah. You're talking about like. In terms of you irrigating your land, mm. if you have to give an estimate on this three-acre farm that you have, how much would that cost? Uh, Just irrigating this place alone. Without mulching. Okay, you with the mulching and everything. Having a, like a setup like this. Having a setup like this. Yes, yes, like this. Let's see. Can't I'm coming. Let me do a quick man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> This could take you. This one could be thirty k. Thirty k. Yeah. Wow. Maybe more. 30, between thirty and forty k should do. Interesting. See, the, the thing again is because we are not very, we are not very, um, previewed to irrigation farm. Okay. A lot of the things we use are expensive. Oh, you can you can work on the bed, sir. So. Okay. Oh, feel free. Just work. I'll just thank you. Because you yeah. can work on the bed. A lot of the things we use are expensive. They sell valves to you singularly. Mm. And that's expensive. When they sell a valve to you, one valve, and then they sell the gums in it for you, to you, that's expensive. Incapla sells the whole thing, 200 pieces. Okay. And it's cheaper than you buying. Yeah, definitely buying in bulk is cheaper than buying it one. But one, one. Interplus will only sell to you if you buy drip lines from them and sub mains from them. Okay. But you would also want, may not have the that much to buy a lot from Interplus, so you may not be able to buy. Okay. From them. Yeah. So that is, it. I think, forty k should to get should you get this one. Wow. It could be cheaper. It, again, irrigation costs depends on the layout of the farm. Mm. Right. I I wanted a cheaper irrigation, so I decided all my beds to run down. Then it's cheaper for me. Okay. But if I'm supposed to have, 
you know, you look at farms and you, you see how aesthetic they look like. That one runs down like this, one comes across, then one yeah. goes triangularly and all of those. Your irrigation costs to go up because you are going to buy more submarines, small connectors and all of those to get it running. It will be nice. But you can start a new farm with that amount. <laughs> Sure, sure. If I get to the point where I want to do a nice farm, I'll do it. But I mean, it looks beautiful though, because what you go to purpose, you transplant and they are grown like the other ones. It looks very beautiful. Even with the more uh, you having the beds and the pipes and everything here, yeah. it looks nice. So just picture with the mulching and everything. It looks very beautiful. We are also looking at growing um, marigold and um, sunflower. Okay. Not commercially, but just around the entire farm. Why, why, why those? It it helps with insect control. Okay. And okay. again, the coloring brings attracts more pollinators, so you have more of your flowers being pollinated, pollinated. to become pepper. So more fruits, more money, more happiness. Yeah, sunflowers attract a lot of these bees exactly. and stuff to help. Exactly. That that's one thing I want to grow. Bees for pollination. I see I see South Africans do that a lot. Yeah. I don't they, like they that. They make it they make it give me money. Yeah, yeah, they make it easier. Yeah. Bees make it easier for pollination. Way easier. And if you like it, you can even build their their hive. Yeah, exactly. So they can be in there for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's why that like um something for the family if you put it exactly be <laughs> honey and stuff for the family. Okay, um, so let, let, let's. So I, I read down with all the entire place. So we have, yeah, we have, we have um, a 25,000 liter poly tank. Okay. So this is a 25,000 liter poly tank. This is supposed to be used for the entire place. We should the have used in this three acres. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like uh, we should have used um, 30,000 liters of water. Of water. Okay. But we are using 25,000. We have an extra poly tank if we would want to, but we wouldn't stress it. 25,000 would do the magic for us. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So 25,000 would, would be used for this place. Interesting. Okay. Now if I have to ask the, the, what's the future like for Lenny's farm? We are looking what to- I do, What's the- We are looking to process our own purpose. Okay. And that's that's the idea. We 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 realize that farmers don't make a lot of money because they don't process their 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 produce. We sell them raw. It mm. gets processed, brought back to me, the farmer, to buy at a, a far more expensive price. I give credit to the the processor, but I think it's time we, we take charge thing. of our own our own um, processing. We could we could turn them to pepper sources. We could turn them to not pepper sprays and all of this we want to process them sure sure that that's that's that the and idea we want to that, try them we want to anything that you process to the final product you make more money than exactly. at, the, at the raw state exactly that, that's the idea we are not looking to only sell raw we are open to selling to people raw we're open to selling to people who would want to buy 10 tons 100 tons we we can expand to any amount they want once you are interested in buying them, you can come, we'll sign contracts. We'll supply to them. We'll supply to you. Yeah, so you if, 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 if you are buy. watching this video and you want you want a constant supply of peppers, habaneros to be precise, yeah, his contact and details will be in the description. You can reach out to him. Yeah, and yeah, make things work. That's He's nice. coming by. <laughs> okay, but I like, I, like, I like how good this place is. I like how big this place is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so is there another place you are supposed to go? Or? No, that will be it for the farm tour. I think we are done. Okay, okay. So yeah, so we end the video here. And in the next video, I'm going to look at how to grow habaneros. How to grow habaneros from beginning to the end. As you can see, he's prepared this place for a next harvest, uh, how do you call it? Transplanting and another cultivation of habaneros. So they are the plan is to grow mainly habaneros, right? Yep, yep. Okay, okay. So yeah, now end this video. Um, I believe you you guys are enthused like I am because I'm, I'm I don't know I feel happy being in such places. Yeah, it looks very nice and very beautiful. Yeah. So yeah, now end this video. I'm going to look at habaneros, how to start, how profitable it is because that's what he specializes in. 
and he really likes um, that type of crop too. So yeah, we are going to look more into that, learn more about it, how to start, how to go about it from the beginning to the end, from the point where you nest, from seedlings to the point where you do the transplanting and harvesting. So yeah, stick and stay with us in the next video. Please like this video, subscribe and share. Share to your friends and family to see what interesting thing people are doing. So if you're interested in growing, starting a farm or your own, want to learn something, this is the channel for you. This is some of the things you can learn. If you're a first time visitor to here, please check out the other videos, learn more about it, be enthused about it. You can reach out to any of the farmers for any assistance that you need on your farm or in start your own farm. So yeah, that will end up this video and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.